Hi, and welcome to our first Grab and Go STEM project. Today we're talking about animal science, more specifically animal ears and hearing and animal feet. Um, before we get started, make sure you have your Grab and Go bag ready and all the supplies listed on the first page of your packet. Remember, this is not live, so if you want to pause it at any point because I'm going too fast or you want to finish the rest of your project later, feel free to do that. Okay, let's get started with the first thing. Okay, first things first, we are actually going to get something ready for our last project because this involves glue and we'd like to give it time to dry. So take out your six popsicle sticks and your liquid glue. We are going to make some animal feet for one of our later experiments. Okay, so I want you to have your six popsicle sticks out. We are going to make animal feet. You're going to be making two pairs of feet, so three popsicle sticks per foot. I'm going to show you how we're gluing these together, and then we can put them to the side while we do our first project. So all you're going to do is put a little dab of glue on one end of the popsicle stick, angle it, and make a V like that. And now you can do this while it's still wet. Put another dab of glue on top of the popsicle stick on the right. Put your third one on top and make kind of a W. That's all you have to do. Now we're going to sit and let them dry and hopefully they'll be dry by the time we get to our second project. If not, you can pause the video, stop the video and come back to it when it is dry. But for right now, let's just put that to the side and move on to our first project. Okay, now that that's done and we've left it to dry, we can move on to our first project. Our first project is all about animal ears and hearing. I want you to go in your packet to the page marked Shaping Up. It should look like that. And I want you to take a look at the four animals I have on this page, specifically their ears. So what do you notice about the ears? Are they all the same, all the different? And what's different about them if they are different? Are they different shapes? Are they different sizes compared to the animal's head? Are they all the same? They're not all the same, right? And that's because every animal has ears designed specifically for that animal to help them find food, keep an ear out for danger, and all sorts of other things that are specially suited to that animal. Okay, so now let's move on to the project. What we're going to do is we're gonna make our own animal ears to see how that changes our hearing. All right, so take your paper out, have your scissors and your tape ready, and as well, as well as a pencil. All right, let's get started. All right, so I have my paper, my tape, my pencil, and my scissors. We are going to be making ourselves some new ears based on animal ears. So what I want you to do is make a lot of different shapes and sizes so you can test out what you think is going to happen. Uh, no. Okay, so I have my tip, my pencil, my scissors, and my paper. So we are going to be making animal ears in different sizes and shapes so we can try and figure out what are the best Mm. Nope. Okay, so I have my tape, my pencil, my scissors, and my paper. What we're going to be doing is making ourselves some fake animal ears in different shapes so we can test out what's the best for hearing. Are they big ears, small ears, flat ears, curved ears? We're going to find out with this project. So you might have different colored paper, but you have two sizes. You have the really long ones 
and the regular size construction paper. I'm going to show you how to do a few shapes, but you can do your own shapes if you want to. The first shape we're going to make is a regular old animal ear. I'm going to be making them about a medium length. So I'm going to cut this paper in half or almost in half. I'm going to flip this over and draw kind of a pointed half circle. I'm going to cut that out. And they don't need to be exact the first time, but what you are going to do is take the first one you cut out and trace it onto the other piece of paper so you can have two ears that are the exact same size and shape. Because you could try this experiment with one ear, but it works much better if you have both ears, just like the animals do. Okay. So remember, after you make your first one, to trace it before you put it together. I'm only going to make one ear, so we can keep this video a bit shorter. So when you're making your second ear, pause this video if you're following along with my shapes, and then start it again once you're finished, cutting the two ears out. Okay, so it's a flat ear, right? How do we make it more like an animal ear? We're gonna cut about an inch on the bottom, take a piece of tape, have it ready, hold one end side of the ear and move it over to the other side and tape that down. Remember, these don't have to be super pretty, they just have to be a certain shape. Flip it over, Hold the other flap down and tape that too. So we have our first ear. It's kind of like a dog ear, right? All right, let's move on to our next one. We are going to make a really big ear. It's kind of similar to the one we already made except it's bigger. So this is more like, if you look at the sheet of paper, it's like a deer's ear. They have larger ears. So what do you think the larger ears are gonna do? Is it gonna help them hear better? Is it not gonna be as effective as a smaller ear? We're gonna find out. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna curve it, just like the deer's ear are, by folding it over like that, taping it, flipping it over, taping it like that. Now I didn't trace it, but remember, you need to make two ears, so you're gonna trace it before you cut it and tape it together. Okay, what about a different kind of ear? I'm gonna take one of my big sheets of paper and make an elephant ear. It's not gonna be quite to scale of the elephant ears. We don't have paper big enough, but you will get a large flat ear. So I'm just gonna make kind of an irregular oval like that. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. In fact, elephant ears aren't a perfect shape. So now we're gonna cut that out and you're gonna get something that looks like this. Now, elephant ears are not curved, so we're not gonna cut it and tape it. This is gonna be one of our flat ears, so we can test whether flat ears or curved ears work better. I want you to make one more kind of ear, and that is gonna be 
a smaller ear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut one of the regular size construction paper in half and then cut it in half again. We're gonna make kind of a bare ear where it's just a wide semicircle. Cutting that out. And we're gonna slightly curve this one too because bear's ears are curved. If you wanna make things more curved than I'm making it, all you have to do is cut higher up and you will get more of a curve. So instead of one inches, you do two inches or something like that. Don't forget to trace your second one. Okay, so we've got all these different shapes of ears, right? There's some I made earlier. Oh, another thing you can do is you can take that really big piece of paper and make the biggest ear you can out of that piece of paper. You're gonna make another kind of pointed semicircle, but it's more like a flower petal. And then you can cup this around your ear. Okay, so now that we have our ears made, we have to figure out which ears work the best. So how are we gonna do that? Well, what I want you to do is put on some music, turn on the TV, have someone talk to you from the other side of the room. And I want you to put your ears on. You can just hold them there with your hands and move around the room, maybe go further away from the sound and stay in one place. So the reason you're gonna stay in one place, in the same place, is so you don't mess up your experiment. If you're in three different places, testing out the different ears, you're not gonna know which one uh, hears more effectively because in one of them, you're gonna be closer to the sound and that's gonna make the sound louder. So make sure when you do start testing your ears that you stay in one spot. Okay, just so just pause the video and do that. And we'll be back in a second. Okay, now that you're back with your ears, what did you find out? Which ones worked the best? Was it the smaller ones? Was it the bigger ones, the flatter ones, the curvier ones? In general, in the animal world, larger and more curved ears are going to be on animals with better hearing. So the larger and more curved the ears, the better they um, take the sound. So is that what you found? If it's not, that's all right. But that is generally what we see in the animal kingdom. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next bit. All right, now that we're done with our animal ears, I want you to go to the page in your packet marked more than hearing and look at the three animals on the page. A couple of them you might be familiar with, Maybe you're not, but that doesn't matter. What we're looking at is their ears. Now, each of these animals have ears that are shaped the way they are to do something more than hearing. So I want you to think about what that might be. Think about where these animals live. If you're not sure, you could always look it up or think about things that they do, or just take a look at the animals and have a guess. And remember, this isn't about being right. Science isn't about being right all the time. It's about thinking and having ideas and making guesses. And a lot of the time, those guesses aren't right. But the important thing is, is that you did think about it and make your own guesses. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the answers. And if you're not ready to hear the answers, pause this video and start it once you're ready. I want you to write down your ideas on that page. Okay, so 
Are you ready for the answers? The first one is the elephant. And the elephant has big floppy ears to actually keep itself cool. So the big floppy ears can act as fans for the elephant. Specifically, we're talking about the African element, uh, elephant. <laughs> and the African elephant lives somewhere that's very hot. So they use their ears to help them keep cool by using them as fans. In fact, one of the biggest differences between African and Indian elephants is the size of their ears. African elephants have bigger ears because they live somewhere that is hotter than the Indian elephants. Okay, so we're ready to move on to the next one. The jackrabbit. So the jackrabbit obviously has these big, tall ears that are very good for hearing, but I pointed out on the sheet the veins running through the ears. So the jackrabbit also lives somewhere very hot. And what the ears and the veins do is those veins are very close to the surface. And so what it allows them to do is cool their blood down. They can't sweat like we can. So the way they get cool is when their blood is circulating through their body up to the ears, the heat dissipates, the heat escapes and cools down their blood and helps keep them cool. And obviously the bigger the ears, the more blood they can um, have in there to do that. Okay, so in both instances, it was about keeping cool in a hot climate. All right, let's move on to the Basset Hound. The Basset Hound is different. The Basset Hound doesn't necessarily live somewhere hot, although they might, but their ears aren't designed to keep them cool. Something you may or may not know about Basset Hounds is they're known for tracking things by scent. They can smell them and find that smell and move towards whatever it is they're tracking. So their long ears that drag on the ground they're dragging on the ground for a reason. When they drag on the ground, they kick up different scents from the ground. And their ears also funnel those scents to their nose so that they can smell things better and easier so that they can track. Okay, so now we are done with animal ears and we're going to move on to our animal feet. Okay, so now we're moving on to our next project. If you want to come back to this another day, this is a good time to stop. Um, okay, so now we're moving on to our second project, all about animal feet. If you want to come back to this another day, this is a good time to stop it. There will be a timestamp in the description, so when you come back, you can get right to this point without having to watch the whole video again. So feel free to pause and come back to it if you're feeling like it. Okay, let's get started. First things first, check that your popsicle stick feet are dry. It's a very important step because it won't work all that well if they're not dry. So if they're not dry right now, just pause the video and come back to this when they are dry. But what I want you to do is look at this sheet called these feet were made for i put four different animals on this page and they're all pretty different there are two birds one amphibian and one mammal so why do you think they all have similar feet and what is similar about them they're different sizes they're different shapes they're different colors but they have one big thing in common can you tell me what that is? They all have webbed feet. They have a thin piece of skin connecting their toes. Now, why do you think they all have webbed feet? So, like I said before, they're very different animals, but they all do the same thing that the webbed feet help them with. So what I want you to do is pause the video and write down your idea on the sheet before we move on. So 
Are you ready to hear the answer? They all have web feet because they all spend a lot of time swimming. The web feet help them swim better, and we're going to find out why in our next project because we are going to make web feet. So have your dry popsicle stick feet ready, um, scissors, the empty sandwich bag from your grab and go bag, tape, and your large container of water. All right, so are you ready to make some web feet? All right, we're ready to start the web foot experiment. My feet are dry. Before we get started, remember to make sure that your feet are dry and not still um, All right, we're ready to start the web feet experiment. Uh, before you get started, make sure the glue is dry on your webbed feet. And if it's not, pause the video and come back to this. Otherwise, let's get started. I have scissors, the empty sandwich bag, my two webbed feet, and some water and a container to put it in. Uh, this experiment works better if you have a larger container. This is just, you know, what I brought my lunch in, so it's what I have. But the more water you have in your container, the better you can feel the effects of what we're doing. Okay, we're gonna put that to the side right now. You are going to leave one foot the way it is. This is called your control. Without the control, we couldn't compare the two feet. So we're gonna put that to the side and only work on the one foot. What I want you to do, I oh, also need your tape, is cut the top off this plastic bag. And now cut down the sides, the bottom. Oops, having a little bit of a hard time with this. There we go. and the other side. So what you're gonna end up with is two different pieces of plastic. You can also do this with packing tape if you have it at home. It's a bit easier than this is, but um, we do what we can. All right, so now take one of those sheets and cut it in half. What we're gonna do is we're going to cover our foot with it so put it on top of the foot, make sure it goes all the way to the edge and flip your foot over. We're gonna kind of wrap this like a present. I'm going to fold the pieces of plastic in and tape them. And do the other side the same way. If you have packing tape, you're only going to put the packing tape around it but make sure you cover both sides, not just one side. Okay, now we're going to take the second small piece, put it on top and flip it over again. So we'll have both sides covered. Now this, this is getting kind of tricky because the plastic makes everything very slippery, but We'll work it out. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is just to put tape along the edges so it's one big piece. I'm gonna trim some of the extra off but it's not necessary and now this is our webbed foot the plastic is going to be like that thin skin that's connected between the toes all right i'm going to put some water in this container Okay, move my tape out of the way. 
Now I want you to take that first foot, the foot without any plastic on it, and move it through the water. So this is your control, which means this is what we're going to compare the second foot to. So now that we've done that, take your webbed foot and move it through the water. You feel that? You need a bit more force to get it through the water and it's pushing much more of the water around. So if you want to feel it, you could do both at the same time to feel the difference. But there is a definite difference in the web foot and the one without the webbing. So the web foot acts as a paddle. It has a lot more surface area, which means there is more space for the water to push against. And that helps them swim faster. It's kind of like if you've ever seen divers wearing flippers. That is our way of using web feet to help us swim better. So that's it for this grab and go stem. I hope you had fun. Okay, now we're done with web feet, but I have one more thing about animal feet to show you. So I want you to go to the last page of the packet it's called NJ Animal Tracks, looks like this. And these are some animal footprints that you might have seen near your house or in the woods in New Jersey. All of these animals live in New Jersey. Some there are more of than others. Some you may find around here in Lodi and some you probably won't like the black bear, thankfully. But you see raccoons and gray squirrels all the time. And now you will be able to find out if they've been walking around your neighborhood by looking at these tracks. So you're not gonna see them in pavement or on the street or on rocks. You're going to see tracks in wet soil. So it's always good to check uh, after a rainstorm when things have been particularly wet. That's when you'll get good tracks. Or you can take this with you on a hike in a forest and see if you can find anything. Okay, that is it. Thank you for coming to our grab and go STEM. I should say thank you for grabbing and going. Uh, our next session, which you're all signed up for, is August 9th. You can pick up your new bag then and there will be a new video. We're gonna be talking about how animals stay warm and dry in super cold places and also how sharks float. Okay, I will see you again next time. I hope you had a lot of fun and learned something. Bye.